So today I'm going to be covering in my first episode shade perennials and I have some really neat varieties here that I want to share with you um, hopefully some varieties you haven't heard of before or haven't planted before and uh, just try to find some really unique things at the nursery and the very first one I want to cover with you is actually from the Dan Hinkley selection and I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with who Dan Hinkley is but he actually discovered Heronswood Nursery, uh, which I actually live about a block from, <laughs> in Kingston, Washington. And he travels all around the world trying to find unique species of plants that we can grow here in the Northwest. And this happens to be one of them. And this is called a Moonlight Chinese Fairy Bells. And it's a herbaceous perennial. And I just liked it because of its curly leaves. It has this beautiful variegated um, colors to it. It does get a small flower on it, but most people purchase it for the leaves. And what a great way to brighten up the shade, especially a really dark corner, with something as bright and frilly as this is. Now, this is hardy down to zone 7, so for those of you who live in colder areas, this may not be the plant for you, um, unless you want to plant it in container and maybe bring it in during the winter. But for those of us here in the Northwest, we can probably get away with it, as long as we don't have too harsh a winter. Now the average size on one of these is about two feet tall, so it doesn't get completely, you know, out of whack. So this is great for like the middle part of the border, and I'm actually going to plant this guy under a tree, um, not directly under the tree, but close to it. And it can take about three to four hours of sun, but for the most part it prefers the shade. Um, but I just thought it was really cute. <laughs> this would look awesome in a container, actually, if you were um, planting a shade container. But just wanted to introduce you to that species. Uh, I've had folks coming in asking for it, and I honestly had a really tough time finding it. And then I uh, found out that Monrovia was offering them, so I purchased a bunch so that we could have them there in the nursery for sale. But what a great little plant. Uh, what else do I have here? Okay. So another really neat perennial is called a Japanese Painted Fern. And hopefully you can see the color of this. If not, I'll make sure to put a color photo down in the corner for you. This is probably one of my favorite ferns for planting in the shade. It has a really pretty pinkish tinge, silvery tinge to its leaves. And it's pretty hardy. This thing's down to, what does it say here? Yeah, zone three. It's down to minus 40 degrees. So for those of you who live in really cold areas, this is a fabulous little shade plant. Now, when it comes to shade, a lot of people think that there just isn't a whole lot to choose from out there. But there's a bazillion types of shade plants. So, I mean, let's just think about it here for a minute. Most of the shade plants grow in the understory of trees in their natural habitat. And shade isn't necessarily all about the blooms. It's more about the texture and the leaf colors and the different types of greens that you can actually put into a shade garden that will make it very interesting. Um, after this video here, I'll be giving you a tour of my shade garden. And I'll show you some monster hostas <laughs> that I currently have growing out back. This is their third year and they're definitely coming into their own. But I'll also kind of give you an example of the different textures and colors that you can bring to the shade garden without necessarily having to have blooms. Now, of course, you can add the blooms. Uh, there's annuals that you can always add, and there are perennials. But there are some of the perennials in the shade gardens that don't necessarily bloom all season long. But you can have a succession of blooms depending on the types of plants that you plant. And uh, a silver kind of painted fern like this can definitely add a little bit of color as well as texture with its lacy leaves. Extremely hardy. Um, it will die back. But it will come back again in the spring and then just come back fresh and pretty and just add a really beautiful texture to the garden. So there's one for you. Japanese painted fern. And of course you can't go into the shade without talking about hostas. and light to the shade garden and this one happens to be called fire and ice and again it's a green and white variegated leaf it kind of comes out fluted a little bit uh, but what a great way to add some lightness to the shade garden uh, and you can plant these near the front of your shade garden um, but definitely brightens up a dark corner 
And these are hardy as well, down to minus 40 degrees. So pasta, great way to go. And I had a new type of pasta I wanted to introduce you to. And I just thought the name was really cute. And this is called Curly Fries Pasta. And uh, these come out like a chartreuse green. This is still a youngster yet. And as soon as I get him in the garden, he'll be more chartreuse or like a, a lemon lime type of green. But another great way to add some texture, the leaves are just all kind of curly on the edges. That's its name, uh, Curly Fries. And it actually won Shade Perennial of the Year in 2016. Um, it stays small and compact. It doesn't take up a whole lot of room. So this would be great in containers as well as in the front of the shade garden. So pasta, Curly Fries. And let me see, we have got, again, party down to minus 40 degrees. You can't lose when it comes to hostas. Uh, just wanted to show you a couple varieties there, and I had one more, just way over here, <laughs> and that's this little guy, and this is called Blue Mouse Ears, and he's probably one of the tiniest of hostas that exist out there. He doesn't get very big. He gets maybe 12 inches tall by 12 inches wide. Super little small leaves right here, so again, if you've got a small area that you need some smaller plants for, and this is also a beautiful blue-green, so another way to add another type of green color to your shade garden. But yeah, blue mouse ears. Um, teeny tiny little hosta. So look for these in your nurseries. These are fabulous. And this one is also hardy down to minus 40 degrees. So you can't lose with hostas in your shade garden. Um, there's so many varieties out there and colors. It's incredible. So another one I was really excited about, and that is epimediums. I don't know if you've ever planted one of these or if you've ever heard of them. I see the sun starting to come my way so there might be some glare <laughs> going on here. Just can't move fast enough here. But epimediums are the perfect shade perennial for dry shade. I intend to plant a bunch of these uh, underneath some cedar and fir trees that I have. Um, any of you who have seen some of my previous videos know that I have got a lot of fir trees in my yard. It's a constant battle with uh, pine needles. But anyway, epimediums come in so many different varieties and this one happens to be a lower grower. It will only get 12 inches tall by 12 inches wide, but they do have a tendency to spread. And this gets a fantastic flower on it. Um, this one is the Epimedium rubrum, so it gets a beautiful pink flower on it. And I'll flash a picture down in the corner for you because it's a little late now. It's already done its bloom thing. But as you can see, its new leaves come out in this beautiful, like, bronzy color. So again, another way to add uh, some color to the shade garden. And I like it because it's usually so dry underneath the trees, especially in my front yard. Um, I'm always looking for something that will do really well in the dry shade, and this is perfect for that. Now, it doesn't mind a little moisture. Mind you, it's not like you can't just walk away and leave it alone, but it's not going to keel over and die either the moment it gets dry. So, Epimedium, what a fabulous perennial for dry shade. Uh, it's also called barren wart. Uh, what else can I tell you about this guy? Well, it flowers usually in April and May, and we've just passed that, but uh, it's beautiful for its flowers as well as for its foliage, and it's tough as nails. Uh, this guy is hardy down to zone 5 through 8. So, epimediums, great little shade plant. Okay, so a brief rundown for shade. Um, I have a beautiful planter here. Um, so a friend of mine just had her 50th birthday and I wanted to do something special for her. So she had a couple of planters in her front yard that she didn't know what to do with and they were sitting there empty. And she gets maybe three to four hours really late afternoon sun. So for the most part, the planter sits in the shade. So I put this one together for her, um, which has some calla lilies in the back of it. I added some coleus, as well as Japanese forest grass, uh, begonias, and of course some fuchsias down here at the bottom that will start to trail over the edges. But I'll get a close-up picture of this for you guys, being starting to get kind of glary now. But uh, yeah, I hope she likes it. She hasn't seen them yet. Uh, I'm gonna be delivering them this afternoon to her front yard so that she's pleasantly surprised when she comes home from work. But uh, yeah, just wanted to do something special for her. And once these blooms stop here on the calla lilies, and won't be here forever, it'll still have the beautiful spiky, strappy leaves uh, that kind of have a maroon margin on them. So different uh, type of calla lily. But anyway, 
she wanted something that has a pop of color near her front door and hopefully this is the ticket and she'll really enjoy it and a lot of these will come back the next year so some of these are annuals like the coleus here is definitely an annual up here in the northwest she may have to bring the calla lily in but the grasses the begonias and the fuchsia actually the fuchsia is semi hardy she may have to bring that in as well but for the most part these will take her all the way through until the first frost so just wanted to introduce that to you guys and uh, getting ready to make a special delivery for her for her birthday okay if you have any questions or comments of course you can leave those in the description box down below and i will be adding a little trailer of my garden uh, especially my shea garden since i'm doing a special here on shea plants today and then in my next video i will be doing uh, sun perennials uh, i wanted to introduce you to some more varieties that you can add to the sun and give you a tour of my yard in the sun where i plant all my sun perennials so meanwhile hope you guys are out there getting your hands dirty enjoying your spring it's just about time for summer as we're starting to see in our weather hitting 85 degrees today so stay cool out there, keep watering, and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.